Hello guys, recently I asked my Laravel audience what do they use for mobile applications and React Native was a favorite over Flutter. And we did release the course on Flutter with Laravel in March and guess what? I'm presenting a new course on React Native mobile app with Laravel API. It's a one and a half hour long text-based course where we create something like this application to manage categories and transactions kind of a few simple cruds with foundations of react native this course was done by my colleague modestas as well as course of flutter so we have kind of a separate mobile specialist developer on the team and in this video i will try to summarize that course with the main things that you need to understand to start working with react native mobile apps and also at the end of this video i will compare our experience both modestas and myself with flutter versus react native and what we would choose let's dive in to create a react native mobile app with api first we need to create well the api with laravel and this is the first section of the course which is pretty simple the goal is to create the api to be consumed by this list of categories and the full crud of categories and transactions and in here we are reusing the same repository the same laravel api code from our previous course on flutter with laravel api and this was one of the goals to compare flutter and react native with the same laravel api layer here i will just show the main parts of that api so in the lesson about transactions crud the controller code that you need to know is is something like this so index store show nothing really fancy typical laravel api i will just stop on transaction resource which looks like this so we create two api controllers and api resources to transform the data somewhat next important part is authentication which laravel has almost out of the box with sanctum which is activated when we run php artisan install api in the very beginning of this project and then also we create api routes for authentication so register and login will work something like that validation and user creation and in routes api we have registration similar for login form and here you can see screenshots from postman how to use that authentication with bearer token so login works like this and returns the token and here are those routes in the routes api so this is authentication so that's api now let's go to react native site and the first screen that we will see is this welcome in the emulator but before that how to get to that first we need to make an important choice is whether to use expo or react native cli in this lesson you can see pros and cons here but we went with expo and you can take a look at this kind of comparison so you can see expo as laravel and react native is more native like php or another comparison i would say would be go fast with a framework like vue.js or react.js instead of playing javascript but both options are okay we just went with expo and to use that the first command is npx create expo app then cd to the project and running the app is npx expo start and you will get a QR code, which you can scan or launch the emulator in your terminal, which will get to this screen. And it already shows the file that you need to edit, app tabs index.tsx, which is TypeScript. So if you worked with TypeScript before, or generally if you worked with React and JavaScript before, then React Native will be, well, more native to you than Flutter, for example. So for example, we open that TSX file and do one change, welcome to hello world, and it refreshes in the emulator and we see hello world here. So that was the demo application. The next part I want to jump into is resetting the application to this almost empty screen. You can see here the screenshot of application file structure and to reset the project you run npm run reset project which will then leave app example as a separate grayed out folder which still is in the repository but then you work with app folder and in this case we have layout tsx and index tsx and then the home page the home screen looks like this which also says exactly which file you need to edit next which is app index tsx and this is what we put inside of that index tsx i skipped a few things that we will get back to later we import a few components like text and view we import session from the context and we'll discuss that in a minute but basically you return similar to react 
export default function. So again, if you worked with React.js on the web, it's very similar in React Native. In some cases, you may reuse the code identical, and then you add a text with on press sign out method. Sign out is just use session. And from this, we made a decision to immediately work on login and logout for now kind of faking it, but still have the layout for authentication. So a separate sign in page is an app sign in TSX, which is for now just going to route to replace to the home page. And the home page will be empty page with just sign out that will sign you out. So it's kind of faking the authentication for now to have the flow of first pages. And we also need to discuss that context. Here's the file context CTX TSX, which also use storage state. These are pretty new terms, but basically Basically, what you need to understand about context is this. It's a way to pass data without having to pass it in every component. Kind of like global variables and global session context. So this is where we define that context and this is use session that remember we used a minute ago in the pages. And also in this lesson we work with secure storage so npx expo install secure store to save the session token. Here's the code. I will not discuss that in detail. I will link to the course and you may take a look and inside the course there's a link to repository. And then another thing I want to stay on is layouts. So global layout with export default function root. And all we need to do for now is define that it's within the session. So this is the public layout without signing in. Then later in the app app layout TSX, this is a different layout. We have a different logic. So here we have loading text if something is happening. If there's no session, we redirect to sign in route or page. And that's it. Then we create that sign in page with public layout. So sign in TSX here, but app index TSX becomes inside of the app with brackets subfolder. As I'm talking here, I understand it's not perfectly clear because you need to understand a lot of things, but I'm trying to make a summary kind of overview of the concepts. You would at least understand what is what. It's hard to get deeper in this kind of 10 minute summary. And the next thing I want to talk about is sign in page styling like this. And now our goal is to build something like this. And styling of the elements works differently than React JS in React Native instead of class name we do style. So view style, or you may do something like this, import style sheet, and then create the set of styles to reuse later. And that view style is kind of like div in HTML, it's view for any element with styles attached to it. So for example, element could be also button, and then you can also define the styles to that button. So this would be the first result. And then element by element, you add styles. So view and then inside you have button, which will lead to this. And then step by step for the page of sign in, we get to this view with styles that are defined later here as container, then text with styles for title, text input with styles of input, which are again defined here below in the same file, and the result becomes visually this. So this is a quick overview of how you style elements on React Native screen for application. Then we work on that button to actually work, which is on press, and then you have a method handle sign in, which you define here. So it does look similar like React JS on the web, right? In this case, we just call sign in function, which comes from our context. And then again, we're still faking the authentication with just going to the home page. So this is how you add actions to your buttons in the application. And the final thing I want to show in this summary video is how to get the data from the API, how to interact with it. So here we have categories list. And to make API calls, there are various tools, and you're probably most familiar with Axios. Again, if you worked with web JavaScript, it's a very popular library, which we can also use in React Native. And this is exactly what we will do. So npm install Axios, probably familiar with that. And then I've skipped quite a few lessons. So we have a file called api.ts, which will call that URL. We use ngrok locally to set up the server for the API. And this is basically the syntax. The next step after we set up the foundation, we actually make the call with, again, similar code like you would write that in React.js or even Vue.js with Axios. API get categories, which would get us the data from the API. And then in our page, index.ts, 
syntax in this case. We use fetch categories from that file. And then down below, we do this fetch categories. Then we have response data dot data because we use API resources on Laravel level. And we have the categories variable from the API instead of hard coding it like this. We did that in a previous lesson that I've skipped. I will just actually quickly show you. I didn't plan to do that, but so you would understand it better. We use flat list component with categories as data. And then inside of our index TSX, we have hard coded categories for now without API. And we use flat list on screen to render that table. We add a few styling things and we have something like this. And then we style it even more further in this lesson. So yeah, again, while shooting this video, I realized that some of those things will not be easy to get across because I'm jumping back and forth. But the goal here in this video is the overview so you would understand what does it mean to use React Native for mobile application for both iOS and Android, how to interact with Laravel API. And then there are a lot of details under the hood to tie it all together. So for that, I invite you in this course, which will also get the repository link. And you can, of course, ask questions in the comments. Now let's get to the topic of React Native versus Flutter. And the conclusion may be described in this one screen. Basically, if you work with JavaScript as a full stack web developer, especially if you work with React JS, using React Native is a no brainer choice. You not only will code in the same way with familiar syntax and will not need to learn another language. And Flutter is a framework of a language called Dart. And also with Flutter, you would need to get familiar with concept of widgets and how to create them differently. So it's a totally new language world and syntax. With React Native, it feels more well native. And you can, as I said, reuse the code sometimes between the web React and React Native for applications. A few downsides when using React Native in our experience was debugging things. In a few cases, debugging things with React Native was more painful than Flutter. And Flutter documentation is very good, powered by Google, the whole Flutter thing. So it's really well documented. Also, kind of outside of this course, we didn't feel that in practice. But from what I've been reading and comparing the frameworks, Flutter is more native in terms of UI elements. So more consistency between iOS and Android and also a bit more performant because it's more ironically native to the platform, to the device. And React Native has a bit of a layer of framework on top, you can call it. Again, you wouldn't feel that on CRUD application like this one, but it may be something to consider. But overall, if you are a full stack web developer working with JavaScript already, then React Native should be your first choice, probably. Do you agree with me? And what questions do you have about this video or generally about React Native? I may answer them in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.